welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere and there's also PayPal, Patreon, Crypto and Thanks button in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to Rod, Todd Wazzle, Jason Hornsby, Christoph Fournier, John Travolta, J Mouse 24, Yuya Mento, M Iron 26, Endless, Flat Earth Sage, Goldie McKinnon, Retro Bill, More Books, Canna Bear, Bogey, Michael Kahn, John Kays, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Will Brax, Mel B. Styles, Troy Shuka, Harry Blade, Mobile Mac 777, Neo the One, Rob W, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Maria Neelands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, The Real Gabster, Abraham Mohammed, Skeptic936, Life is Short, Texas Mike, David Wayne Foster, and Dank. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. Uh, it's like a chart, what the what the British say, and then it's like what they really mean and how everybody else takes it. Oh, Pretty this funny. From, from Righteous Yesterday. What the British say, yeah. I hear what you say. I can't read this. Cut this color combination is just. I can't read it. Read the first column. Let's really see if I can. Just a blurry mess to me, I'm afraid. <laughs> Is it yellow on black, black on yellow? Yeah, I've got no chance. Can you read it? So wait a second. So that's how that's how you being colorblind, certain things really mess you up, like this right here. Yeah, yeah. Like you can't decipher that? Oh, I yeah, got it. Yeah. So the, the game I play, Fortnite, the reason I play that game specifically is because it's got a colorblind mode and you can change how the colors interact with one another to the point where I can see the majority of things I need to see. Uh, out of the six tiles that they give you to show examples of the contrasting colors that they use, five of them I can see on one setting, one of them I can't. So I'm still at a slight disadvantage, but for the most part, that particular setting that I have it on to me, it looks amazing. I've no idea what it looks like to anybody else. It just looks really colourful and great to me because I can see all the different contrasts. Um, but, you know, if you pick a game like Call of Duty or something, by contrast, or by comparison, just to keep the terminology simple, um, by comparison, that's all muted colours, like natural tones. So it's trying to be realistic. And you're running around looking at guys in camo gear. So... For me, I, I, I've played those games. I've got a few of them. I just can't play them. <laughs> I just, just can't see anything. <laughs> I guess I just instantly lose. Whereas at least with Fortnite, I can I can at least play the game to the point where when I lose, I just go, yeah, that's because I'm crap. As opposed to I'm losing because I, I'm at a distinct disadvantage being colorblind. Uh, let me see if I can I pull up. I hear what you say. That's what the British say. What the British really mean is, I disagree and do not want to discuss it further. This is what others understand. He accepts my point of view. <laughs> oh boy, that's funny. I see. So it's saying, here's the phrase that we would say, and I can read that bit. I hear what you say. And then the middle yeah. bit, which I can't read, I can just about make out now you've said it. I disagree and do not want to discuss it further. Is that correct? What the British mean? Yep. What's the last one say? And then it says what others understand. He uh -huh. accepts my point of view. Okay, so the last <laughs> column is what the person's interpreting. I hear what you say to mean, as opposed to what it actually means. Gotcha. Okay, do a couple more. Okay. With the greatest respect, that's what the British would say. The others, what the British mean is, I think you are an idiot. <laughs> And this is what others understand. He is listening to me. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, let me see another one. What the British mean when they say, That's good. They really mean, 
you know, what, what others understand is that's poor. No, I missed it. I missed the middle one. I'm sorry. I'm going back and forth. It started out, that's not bad. What the British mean is that's good, and what we understand is that's poor. That's a that's not a really good one. Let me find a good one. All right, the British say that is a very brave proposal. What they really mean is you are insane. And what others understand is he thinks I have courage. <laughs> any of Where those you words get this with, with that one, any of the words could be substituted. So uh, it, it, of the description and the interpretation. So that's a courageous idea or what a heroic idea that that all means. I think you're an idiot. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let me, let me see one down here. I'll bear it in mind. What you're really saying is I've forgotten it already. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and everybody thinks you're saying they will the, the probably other one for do that, it. The other, the other version of that is, I or we will take that into consideration. Yes, well, we'll take that right. into consideration. Meaning we won't. We'll put that on the back burner and never talk about it ever again. Wow. All right, this is a good one. I'm sure it's my fault. That means it's your fault. That's what they're really saying. And we think you're saying, what do they think? It was their fault. <laughs> Question mark is we. Oh, this is a good one, Nathan. You must come for dinner. It's not an invitation. I'm just being polite. I will get an invitation soon. <laughs> is that true? Yeah. When you say to somebody you must come for dinner? It would have some time put at the end of it. So you must come if, you must come for dinner sometime means I'm just being polite and saying that I accept you as a, an acquaintance that we will undoubtedly meet again. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to invite you to dinner. We must do dinner sometime means we probably won't ever do dinner, but I accept that I'll probably see you again and probably say, oh, yes, we must do that dinner we arranged to do. That's what it means. Uh, let's do the last one. Could we consider some other points? That means I don't like your idea. And everybody thinks you're saying they have not yet decided. <laughs> uh, read the last one as well. I can't read the yellow again, but I have a few minor comments. That means basically everything that I've written is everything you've written is garbage. Everything you've said is stupid. <laughs> that's funny. And I would suggest, what? I would suggest means I insist you do this. Sometimes I qualify that when I, when I say that to a guest, I would suggest, and then I'll qualify it, meaning I demand you do this. So sometimes knowing the, the um, idiosyncrasies of a British terminology means that I appreciate that someone may misinterpret what I'm saying and therefore it is actually worth qualifying what I mean after I've said it. Got it. So you're playing boss. It's not that. It's just that if you, if you, if you're in a workplace in Britain and someone said, so those are all workplace terms, really. They're workplace middle management jargon. Well, yeah, I would suggest X, Y, Z means go away and do exactly that immediately. <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> playing boss. Yeah, we'll just put that on the back burner is the last thing you want to hear. Not right. So we'll take that into consideration is a polite way of saying we'll put it on the back burner. Is it like we say I'll keep it in mind? Yeah, we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Meaning you ain't got a shot. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, Kent. Good morning, everyone. Plus, we go against that quite directly, hey, Tenth, uh, in regards to some of the citations that QE actually doles out, which is to say words have meanings, mean what you say, say what you mean. Well, since words have meanings, 
Matthew Withers said, we don't measure the radius of the earth. We just assume the earth is a sphere. We measure a shadow. Yeah, textbook begging the question fallacy. <laughs> that was so that was so bad for the globe side when he said all that. I mean, it was like, really? You mean FED was right all the time? I mean, that's what basically he affirmed. I was never in any doubt. <laughs> Didn't need Matthew to confirm it. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> Not for us. Not for us. I'm saying the people who are Globers and follow these people finally under the gun, under good questioning, they agreed, uh, he agreed with us. That's never been measured. It's a thought experiment. You have to assume the earth is a globe first and then say these shadow measurements is because the earth is curving. But it doesn't prove the earth is curving. It doesn't prove uh, the fallacy that you're assuming your outcome before you prove it, which is the earth is a sphere. So he, he basically agreed with what we've been saying for years <laughs> because we've been telling him it's a thought experiment and Matthew came in and said, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's useful when in I, some when ways. I first heard, sorry. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, when I first heard that, that it really blew me away. I think I... You were the first one I heard it from, Nathan. I was like, wait a second. So this is all on assumption that they're getting all of this? Really blew my mind. Well, when you're the Greeks and you love spheres, you have to assume you live on one. And then you have to start saying, well, if we live on one, and then why do why is the sun doing what it's doing? And if we live on one, what is the stars doing what they're doing? And if you live on one, then why are shadows at different angles? Oh, it's because of the curve of the earth. Because they yeah, assumed it. Yeah, but I'm thinking, I'm saying all those years of schooling, like you go in these classrooms and you're learning about heliocentrism, and you're learning about the solar system, and it all starts with assumptions. That you have to assume it first and then go from there. That's working backwards. We're, we're, we're in a time in human history where they're doing it now with social issues. Uh, boys can be girls. Girls can be boys. They're doing it all over. This, the world lies. Just get used to it. Yeah, the people, people lie. Yeah. Well, that's why an angle measurement with a tool that could only work with a baseline that's not curved, because there is no way you can get a elevation angle measurement with a curved baseline, destroys everything. Destroys it all. Just one little instrument that they have to use in order for it to work, but they paint a picture around the usage of it around the globe with a dingleberry and all this stuff. But then when you break it down like we have, the, the doggone instrument can't even work. If we lived on a globe, <laughs> that's just short. And uh, you don't need to know everything about it. You don't need to buy one. I wonder what will be next. There's, as I've said in the last couple of shows, there's so many roads that inevitably end to a flat earth. So what's the next thing that will inevitably lead to a flat earth? I suggest that we right, have some of the bolder claims made by the heliocentrists. Because in past experience, things like domes, and earth curve edges, they are all the weaker parts of their arguments that end at flat earth in the most devastating ways. So you kind of have to cast your mind back to 2015 and go, what were the arguments that they came out with first? Because they're typically hiding their weakest problems that prove a flat earth. Like I say, that's, we, that's my we, experience. We covered it yesterday. Right ascension and declination. Equatorial Mount Telescopes. Sure, but we've covered that before. That's part of celestial navigation, I would say. You know, it's no, that, no, celestial navigation is the cipher for the RA and DEC. Because for the RA and DEC to work, uh, you have to do 
a sky-based map. Celestial navigation is Earth-based, terrestrial. But if you're going to do RA and deck, you got to use the sky as the map. So you say, well, how do we use the sky as the map? Well, it's got to be done with a reference. Well, what's the reference? Vernal equinox. What's so important about that? Oh, that's when the sun is directly over the equator on the Cartesian system. Okay, so why, why that? Oh, because it negates Earth tilt of 23.4 degrees. There's no such thing as Earth tilt. They put that in. So the equinoctial, the Earth's equator, and the celestial equator, and the sun, the planets, everything is on one plane. It's on one plane. And that's the reference for telling someone in Germany, hey, look up these coordinates and you somewhere in New York, look up the same coordinates and boom, there's the star. Yeah, but you're at a, you might be at a different latitude than him. Yeah, you are, but you've got four settings on the RA and deck. You've got the tripod that's got to be where you are in relationship to Polaris, and it's got to be level, flat. Okay, so your azimuth is pointed to Polaris, and your elevation angle sets your latitude. That's like the sextant, but that's Earth. That's you getting your foundation on Earth. Now you mount the other two axes, RA and DEC, and that's based on the sky map with the vernal equinox. And now once that first uh, axis is set, those two points with the uh, Altaz mount, once you put the RA and DEC mount on, you go to these coordinates. But the reference is the vernal equinox. It acts like Greenwich time. It's hours, just like Greenwich is east and west for longitude. Vernal equinox is 24 hours in the direction for the sky map. But what about when it's time changes and it's no longer the vernal equinox and you're calling your friend in Germany? Doesn't matter. That's the reference you've got to use, that date. Doesn't matter which constellation it's in now, because the sky is moving, not the Earth. But when it's over the equator, that's the date for the reference. And that's when the horizon at sea is the same horizon all the way to the celestial sphere. And you can't see anything below it, only it's above it. Mike's breaking up, by I the way. Call it's, it, it's getting progressive. I think they call it Aries, don't they, as well, you know, because on that, on that spring equinox, apparently. You know, the sun is supposedly in uh, Aries, the constellation. Whether yeah, and, an and they say that changes. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they say that, that changes term. over time. But that's yeah. fine. The sky can move all at once. But it's where the sun is on that date where it becomes a plane and everything is yeah. above that plane. That's right. So, Nathan, since you brought it up, where do you think they're going to go next? It's going to even further prove flat Earth. Like I say, I think the things to look at would be the things that they've typically used to try and assert that they've got a proof of a globe. Because, as I've said in the last few shows, those roads have been built to mask a path that's well-trodden to a flat earth. Edges, right? Well, I've got edges being asserted against us in the pizza pie in a sky vacuum flat earth society model. Well, because they've got a very weak part of their argument in terms of the geometry of a disappearing disappearance point, a vanishing point, the horizon. That's what they've got as their earth curve edge for boats to fall over. Well, when you look at the maps when they were talking about, oh, well, you've got no maps or models. Well, yeah, all the maps are flat. Then when you go on that road of why are they all flat and what's the grid system and how has it been developed, it all, all, the road, all of those roads led to a flat earth, didn't they? And now we're talking about a, an offshoot of that in regards to the celestial aspect with the equatorial plane and the equatorial mount. Well, these are all concepts that have come from a flat earth. Well, they've used 
derivatively to describe a globe, and that's where their arguments that I say would be useful to look at again from 2015. And maybe that's what's led me to, to sort of address the guy that we did yesterday, because he's a normie, and normies are going to put out whatever the mainstream rhetoric's left the, the strongest impression in their mind of. Well, those are going to be the arguments that we need to start looking at again. Talking about mountains and valleys. Yeah, well, Earth's not flat. We've got hills and valleys. Okay. On the surface level, crappy straw man argument. True. But why? Well, because the reference for the heights is in reference to the ground level and sea level. Level. Flat. So, why has that argument been perpetuated so that it can stump a flat earther when they go, well, no, I don't know how to describe or distinguish between something that's geometric and something that's just merely a description. Level versus the hills of the mountains in geographic terms and their reference to sea level how, in terms of how high they are and how they'd all compare to each other across the same reference plane. Again, a road to flat earth. Just by looking at one normies, typical understanding of why he's on a sphere. So that's where I'd look, Neil. I don't know where it will lead because I can't off the top of my head remember all of those arguments from 2015. The ones that we got into on a, a more technical level were things like the Earth Curve Calculator, which we spent several years with, pulling it apart. And then after the fact, we have got a really good technical understanding of what it did and how it worked and how it functionally hijacked perspective in orthographic views and orthographic maths. We then incorporate the... Uh, black swan into the debunking of the geometry as a whole so those arguments were were already being explored but there's got to be other stuff that we that w is just predominant in the mind's eye of every normie that thinks they're on a globe that we just haven't thought okay well let's go let's go back in time look through that argument and figure out why that was being yelled at us by fledgling anti-flat earthers and now normie globers that just come across this subject at a cursory glance or because someone's in their comments talking about it in the case of the guy yesterday, shout out to you, Shelley, if you're listening. I think I think you, they're going to go see with hearing my son. They're going to try to do something with quantum mechanics. I know they're doing it already, but they're going to they're going to grease the skids even more. And well, they use quantum have. mechanics. They, they already have. Uh, yeah. They call it quantum gravity. So they want to link their false gravity to something that isn't false. And uh, so they're already doing that. But um, I think it's it's just a, a weak attempt from the beginning because when we say flat, we mean irregular plane. Okay, it's just, uh, it's it's easier just to say flat, but we mean irregular plane with undulations. And But then you've got bodies of water, which is referenced to zero, sea level. So we know what we're saying, they know what we're saying, but they can take a crack at it by saying, well, well, you can't, what do you mean flat? You got hills and valleys. Well, duh. I mean, my goodness. I mean, we're not saying you can't have hills and valleys on the plane. We're not what saying are we that. saying, Tent? What are we saying? You can't have well, a sphere. Well, we couldn't, it we, couldn't break yeah, it down. we couldn't break it down yeah, anymore. We're Yesterday, Neil, when we were talking about Neil deGrasse Tyson's descriptions of a bowling ball, where he's running his hands over the surface of the bowling ball and saying, as far as you would be concerned at that scale, it would be perfectly smooth. However, it's chubbier at the bottom, and obviously we've got hills and valleys, but that wouldn't be your perception at that scale. Well, likewise, whiteboard and undulations on it, the whiteboard's flat, it's level, but it's not perfectly smooth if you look at a microscopic level. Now, the same is true when you're describing the flat plain that has elevation references for the heights of the mountains or the depths of the valleys. Hey, Nathan, I got a quick question. Go ahead, Chuck. Okay. okay, Michael. Go ahead. Hey, it's Gene. Uh, oh, I'll just... Uh, today I go undergo a... Um, hyperbaric chamber it's for wound healing in a clinic and uh they say they put me under two atmospheres of pressure okay that's very interesting and it's called sea christ and it has a little globe on it but it's funny and they're like what do you mean two atmospheres i asked them and he says something about 14.7 right now and we double it of 100 percent oxygen 
I just thought that was interesting. And I was like, what do you mean by double atmosphere? Like he says, you're going two atmospheres below sea level, he says. Moist. Did you want to did you want to add something? Moist Grundle, you're off mute. Gene. Hold on one second. Um, Tenth, hold on. Moist, can you hear us? Just hanging. My bad. No worries. Can you likely mute because you're causing a load of thank you? Yeah. Jeez. It's just they uh, they hijack some of these terms. So we've got a pounds per square inch value. Well, square inch values that you've got to press on are very embarrassing if you've got a earth next to a sky vacuum. So they just retitle it. So it's an atmosphere. So it's a sphere shaped air pressure that they're doubling. Well, it's just arbitrarily renamed as such, but he qualified what it meant in terms of the pounds per square inch that would press on the walls of the container to achieve the pressure. Well, in your container, you've got the 14.7 PSI they're calling atmospheric pressure on the outside and 2x that pressure on the inside, requiring presumably a great big chamber with thick walls for you to sit in, correct? Correct. Right. Well, That's if you, where I was going. Well, if you register that you've got pressure on the walls of the chamber to achieve 2x pressure compared to the outside pressure when you've got a massive differential like 10 to the minus 17 tor space vacuum versus 14.7 psi the question arises what's it pressing on at the top well the answer is nothing so if you just make it arbitrarily sphere shaped in the description you don't have to explain it anymore that's the only reason it's called atmospheric pressure rather than just describing a number that's arbitrary in the first place it's just a scale we've developed but the scale is based on how much pressure is exerted on the walls of the container, which we don't have in a globe model. So just make the air sphere shaped. Problem solved. <laughs> also, it was funny whenever uh, she, I said atmosphere, and I just question. You know, I had a question mark on my face, pretty much, and she was like, "Yeah, atmosphere." So the world is round. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, we've been programmed and brainwashed with the language itself, which is what, you know, grammar and language is. You know, that's what it's doing. It's essentially perpetuating certain doctrines, religious faiths, beliefs, certain conceptual ways of thinking, just in the very language that we use. So the nurses, for instance, they're not going to be in any way conscious of the fact that when they say atmosphere, they're assuming that what they probably also realise is a measurement per square inch is in any way attributable to some deception and magic that's that's been voiced upon them when they use that word that's just the common vernacular for talking about the air we breathe and well, we're just talking about the atmosphere you know the, the air around I, us. I did i did, uh, I did hate when she says we're going to put you under and now we're bringing you back to surface i like, just say pressurizing and depressurizing no, but sure, but when you go down, you know, the, the pressure increases. Now, if you're going underwater, obviously, that's obviously going to be compounded by the fact that you've got this great weight of the water. But ultimately, that, that's what they're talking about. So if you were doing um, exploration under the sea, there's a certain rate that you'd have to resurface at to stop you getting something called the bends. Well, yes, yeah, so our, our rate is a one and a half pounds per minute. There you go. So if you exceed that, you're going to be in a lot of pain as your body can't acclimatize to the pressure change quick enough. So suddenly you've just got this much higher or much lower, depending on which way you're going, pressure that's exerted on your body that it's not compensating for and it hasn't re to, and therefore pain. <laughs> Fuck that. Excuse my French. Yeah, the bends, the bends I believe, is uh, what, air bubbles in the brain or in the blood, something like that? I don't know if it's air bubbles. I just know that it's a, a, a problem as a result of Decompress decompression uh, too too rapid a rate. Yeah. Just going back to the um I, I don't I think what wounds them what we've just spoke about is you know if you stick into the mean sea level uh being used as your uh, baseline for that elevation angle and the distance it can stretch between the GP and yourself, uh, that's the killer, isn't it? I mean that is the killer. You're using the sea level for the base. The average mean sea level at zero degrees. It just kills them every time. Yeah, Earth's so measured flat. It's a, it's a killer yeah. because it's a fact and it's how it's being measured. 
So you, know, you can't get around that, especially if you're all your mo maps and models that are sphere-shaped. Yet, yet to see any of those, by the way, Glovers. But the assertion that they've got them have been derived from those concepts. It's like when you say it's a killer, it's like, well, it's also not, it's, it's both, you know, devil and angel at the same time because it's, as you put it, a killer. But it's also the birth of the heliocentric model. The, the differential between the eye line and the flat plane between you and it as you raise an elevation is what's given them the, the mathematics. So while you say it's a killer, well, yeah, at the end of the life of the model, but in the in the origin story, it's the birth of the model, isn't it? The flat plane that we're actually measuring is the birth of the heliocentric model. So, you know, the, the flat earthers breed life into the sphere, as strange as that may sound. It's true. Yeah, when, yeah, you say yeah. that to, when you say that to people, you got guys like Phil B. He says that's just not true. But that's the only rebuttal. So tell me how. You're telling me that the globe did not come from flat Earth measurements. Then you tell me how. But you don't get any answers. So that's how you know. They have no answers. That's how it was derived. And that's a fact. We've proven it. Well, Brian has. Well, well you can't ever see... You can't ever see below the horizon, and the horizon is used for celestial navigation, and it's the it goes with horizontal horizon, horizontal. So you can have a fictitious one at your eye line, as Nathan says, with a bubble, uh, but you're going to have to have one on the ground too, and the differential is the depression angle. It's just the depression angle between two horizontals. They back engineered that to say that's Earth curve. So they they needed the flat Earth. They needed horizontals. They needed one at their eye line and one at their base. Uh, and they can create anything out of that with math because it only exists in the math. So back to them getting on us saying, well, you guys say the Earth is flat, but there's mountains and valleys and stuff like that. And I said, well, that's great. Uh, the word horizon is from horizontal, and that is no way related to sphere. So the globe is actually flat, and it was actually measured like that. I, was <laughs> I love it. That's correct. But Nathan, I like I like your illustration with the bookshelf. Uh, you know that that's flat, smooth, and then you put books on it. It's still a flat shelf, right? It's still a flat baseline, and that's what we got on Earth with mountains and stuff. When you talk about level That's or right. horizontal, you're talking about right. being parallel with the horizon, right? It's part of the description when you define that aspect. Sorry, whoever that if was. You stick to the sea, if you stick to the sea level, we'll be using the sea section. If you stick into the sea level, that gets rid of all that. You might have the odd island popping out, but if the sea level is, is horizontal and level for thousands and thousands of miles, and that's what you, is used for the base of the elevation angle that's it that is why there is no height of eye correction if your eyes were on the water and the height of eye is only your eyes above the water so if your eyes were on the water you're at zero yeah, it's the rubber ducky life preserver argument You're in a... You got that? You have hey, that, boy. Gene? Do you understand the rubber ducky? Or are you still not understanding it yet? It's like on, on screen now in the Hangout, right? You can see the sextant, and it's basically being placed in a position where it would be parallel with the horizon, i.e. in the sea. So if you just picture you holding that in a, in a life preserver on the sea itself, in the sea, then there is no accounting for any below surface level tangent point horizon that doesn't exist you're establishing horizontal without any dip correction it's just horizontal when you point it at the horizon well that's flat that's a flat earth that you're measuring well you've got to because you're making a triangle with the line up towards in this case the cloud on the left if it was the cloud you know that's what you're doing you're making a triangle the flat base is what's prerequisite it's required it's it's not a negotiable curve <laughs> but they seem to think it is and it's like no no measuring it as a flat baseline is utilized to give you the maths of the sphere the starting point's a flat Earth. It does, you don't have to like it. It's part of your geometry as much as it is as 
but you've you've as I said earlier borne out this idea of being on a curved surface from the measurements that were taken from a flat plane. Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already, how dare you, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live and there's also a PayPal, Patreon, Crypto and Thanks button in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcomed back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel, so please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. Now we are joined by Tenth Man Rising, Neil, Brian, and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Hey, good morning, good morning. Hello, how are you? Buenos dias, buenos dias. <laughs> buenos dias. ¿Qué <laughs> tal? Muy bien. Right. We're going to do a video today. We haven't done one for a while, and it's uh, a video that's about science. I, it's not just a theory. And the videographer is someone, as always, that we'd like you to go along and just let them know. Nathan Oakley, 1980, sent me. So I'm going to do immediately so that we do actually cover this <laughs> in the show uh, and don't get too sidetracked with other fascinating discussion points that we do have here daily. I'm going to put a link to their video so you can go to them while we're chit-chatting in the intro. And say Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me. Love your stuff. Left you a like, all that kind of nice stuff that won't get your comment removed. <laughs> but this is the uh, Royal Institution. That's the name of the uh, videographer. Let's just let in whoever that is. Adam. Hey, Adam. But yeah, let me know. Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me. You'll see a link to this going by in the live stream chat right now. Um, so if you want to do it immediately, that'd be handy. I have been tempted because I don't actually go and check if anybody's done this. I assume you have. But if it's not the case, I might have to actually physically do it on the show with me saying Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me. So, you know, you can do as I do, so to speak. But I assume that people are actually doing this and letting these uh, various videographers know with a little comment. Uh, are you presenting to speak immediately, Adam? Is there something you want to cover before we even get to this video? I haven't even pressed play yet. Uh, this is just Brian. Just Brian? What you... How dare you demean yourself in such a manner? Brian's logic with something very important <laughs> on screen, I assure you. Go ahead, Brian. What is it? I know. I'll tell you something very fast. If I finish doing your, your intros uh, before you go and play the video. Uh, yeah, it's just the thing about altimeters. Because I just looked up uh, what is the... I looked up, and as a tertiary research, the, the max height an altimeter would work at is 100,000 feet. So that means they don't have a clue after 100,000 feet what height something is at. They, were, they must be just calculating it. You know, that's what, as far as I know, I looked into some of it before, I think they're just calculating it. But 100,000 feet like, is the max for, for, a, for a, an altimeter to stop working at because they don't have the air pressure to, uh, to, get a, to get a reading. But these are just different types of, uh, sorry, let's go back, uh, types of altitude. Sorry, it keeps moving faster. So you have absolute altitude, the height of an aircraft above uh, the terrain, right, that they're flying over. Indicated altitude after setting the altimeter, the current altimeter setting, this is the uncorrected altitude, blah, blah, blah. 
true attitude is either of mean sea level. Pressure attitude is to do with the, 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 based off the pressure and different things. You have density as altitude based off the density, which would involve temperature. Um, there's more I have to say about this, but the only thing I want to show right now is GPS altitude. GPS altitude is a measure, uh, a measure taken from and therefore in reference to the GPS satellite constellation. Since pressure readings past the pilots are taken on the ground, atmospherics will guarantee a, a disparity between G GPS altitude and pressure altitude uh, as altitude increases. Although GPS altitude can be highly accurate, it is usually not referenced while in flight. This ensures all aircraft are using the same reference and any error from pressure settings is generally shared across all aircraft. If GPS altitude is so accurate, highly accurate, why are they not all using it? That to me makes no sense. If it's so accurate, then they would be using it. Makes no sense to me. That's what I wanted to say. I'm sure I'll get some comments in the... Uh... In the live stream, once it's finished going up, and you can leave comments. I don't know if you can leave comments while the show's actually live. That's something I'll check. But either way, um, I'll pass them on to you, Brian. This is the kind of thing that would be triggering fundamentalist religious ball believing zealots over on your channel. <laughs> but if, when they come yeah. here, <laughs> I'll let you know. Well, you know, well, if we have GPS satellites up above us and they're highly accurate, well, yeah, you're not using them. Do you know what I mean? Makes no sense. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. I yeah, that's uh, may I comment? Yeah, uh, it's it's, it's kind of like the same thing, Brian. Why do you need helium balloons for satellites? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so feel free to field your comments in the uh, in the info box below the video. In the meantime, as I say, the link to this channel has gone by in the last few few minutes just before Brian's presentation. Uh, may do it again just to make it complete with this particular bit so go to this person's channel let them know that we've responded to whatever it is that we're going to respond to now this was a choice from 10th man yesterday so i don't as always know what this is going to be like but we'll go in blind as always and we'll have a look um i assume 10th man has actually watched this 10th right do you want to give us a bit of an intro in terms of why pick this video and why we're we going to be covering it well, I, I do watch all the videos I put there, but uh, it's been a few days, so I don't recall. So let's just dive into it. No, fair I, enough. Know you, I know it's. I know you haven't watched it. No, definitely not. But I mean, uh, you know, when the person or the people who are watching this now live on this show go click the link that's going by in the live stream chat and go Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me in quotes on their video. It's nice to, you know, preface it by saying it's because we're going to be covering, and the title normally makes it obvious, I've forgotten what the title is, if yeah. I'm honest, uh, why science is not just a theory, in quotes. So, yeah, let's go yes. on with it. And uh, hopefully they'll reciprocate. If they were to address anything that we cover here today, they'll put a link to my video, which is the main purpose of this, <laughs> that they promote me, as we don't necessarily get any from YouTube. Anyway, let's get into it. Why do I have to put music in? So I have to pause it all the way through just in case I get copyright strikes from this stupid intro. My friend has a theory that Elvis isn't really dead. Okay, so that's a colloquial theory. So let's just qualify straight away. When we say theory in a scientific context, it means the cause and effect reasoning based experimentation that's given you that quote theory, as opposed to, I've got a theory about how quick I can go over these speed bumps on my BMX. He says that Elvis got tired of the limelight and faked his own death. He also has a theory that aliens regularly come to the Earth, but the government keeps their visits a secret. His weirdest theory is that all the leaders of the world are actually shape-shifting extraterrestrial reptiles. Okay, so th this is asinine nonsense that people c can just strap the word theory on. You know, I've got these this theory that these alien monsters that were 50 times the size of a bus roamed around the planet three million years ago it's just a theory it's not it's just a colloquialism in terms of you saying it's just my in this case asinine ideas about stuff yeah that, that's not a theory in scientific context tending to be human i have a hunch that my friend only says these things to make himself sound clever down the pub you no no you see we wouldn't perceive somebody who says it's just a theory when they babble shite. 
we don't perceive that as being smart. Could say that I have a theory about my friend's theories. You could, and it would be the same contextually because you'd be colloquially describing your asinine ideas about your friend's asinine ideas. But really, I'm just guessing at what motivates him to say such outlandish things. Yeah, colloquially, a, a theory. Yeah, you just guessing about it would be your theory, colloquially. My theory about my friend is just a theory. It could be... So when you say just a theory, does adding this word just make it any different contextually when you're talking about asinine ideas that you've put the word theory after? Yeah, colloquially, just your asinine ideas still. Just a theory, not just if it's scientifically based. Be wrong. Maybe he really does believe the things he says. In which case, there may be other explanations or theories to explain why my friend is such a fan of these conspiracy theories. Now there's a new term that's qualified it. Rather than just a theory, now we've got conspiracy theories. So more than one person with an asinine idea, colloquially, not scientifically. So lots of people having the same asinine ideas. That's a conspiracy theory, okay? Yeah, CIA term used to demean people who have ideas that are often proving to be true. Yeah, you can diminish your opposition by giving them this tag of conspiracy theory. Right, okay. Yeah, when they're hijacking the words of science with theory and then strapping it onto conspiracy, meaning lots of people involved, doesn't alter the fact that colloquially and contextually, up until now in the first one minute and nine seconds of this video, we've only been talking about ideas described by people labelled as theories. As for me, I'm a fan of scientific theories. Do you have a little bet? Right, type one in the chat if you think this 1.34 million subscriber-based channel will get the scientific method correct in his next few statements. That is to say, cause and effect reasoning based on systematic, ex systematic experimentation based on a hypothesis that will be supporting a theory. Let's see if he does that. Type one if you think he will. If you think he'll get it wrong and talk about something that isn't necessarily a scientific theory at all, it's just something that's come from the scientific establishment and has gone through perhaps peer review, then type two if you think he'll get it completely wrong, ask about base and not describe cause and effect reasoning based on systematic experimentation. Like the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> oh God, I've given it away before I got enough votes. So what, the colloquial ideas, the asinine ideas that are not based on systematic experimentation after forming a hypothesis, this is like your mates down the pub. Yeah? Le Maitre, in this instance. Down the pub, sounding smart. Yeah, so because it's Le Maitre, suddenly it's Big Bang must be scientifically valid. No, we've already, you don't need to vote anymore. <laughs> I pressed play a bit too quickly before the votes were in. <laughs> Anybody you guessed to in that short period of time, you were bang on. Of course he didn't detail systematic experimentation based on a hypothesis to establish cause and effect reasoning for a phenomenon you've observed in nature. Was he going to do that? No, I did it three times in the gap before we even got the vote in. He managed to went mention Big Bang Theory. Yeah, well, that's not a theory. <laughs> that's a nine nonsense yeah if you want to put it into any of the brackets he's already given conspiracy theory would be the one because it's lots of people talking asinine nonsense repeating Le Maitre's nonsense about a big bang thanks for voting by the way the theory of evolution by natural selection the oh here we go more asinine theories <laughs> oh, 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 and there it is right after he's going to lend credence to it with an actual scientific based experiment based theory that's germ theory. Germ theory of disease. Sorry, ju just the germ theory of disease. It's just germ theory. Right, germ theory is based on systematic experimentation. So he's peddled in Big Bang, theory of evolution, natural selection, all pseudoscience, and then dropped in germ theory of disease. Yeah, so germ theory is the only one in that that's actually got scientific validation to it. But he's got all the pseudoscientists strapped right in the former sentence. I love it. Yeah, you're, you're a con man. None of these are science, with the exception of germ theory. Plate tectonics theory, the theories... So these aren't theories either. These aren't based on systematic experimentation, performing a hypothesis after observing phenomena. It's just some guy down the pub who's decided to make this crap up. ...of special and general relativity. Not theories. <laughs> this is maths. Oh, my God. 
Oh my god. Give him 1.3 million subscribers and make sure that this video gets hundreds of thousands of views. Why? Well, because it's peddling nonsense about what theories aren't, propping up the pseudoscience of what theories aren't, and even interweaving actual scientific based, experiment based theories when it comes to germ theory. And that's actually based on science. What a swindle. There's another one. He's going to do it again. Quantum theory. Right, you mean quantum mechanics. That's based on science as well. But what about plate tectonics? Right, general relativity. They, they, these aren't based on experiments. Yeah, quantum is. <laughs> yeah, quantum mechanics. And my favourite... Um, Go on, Brian. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't it rich the way that he puts down his, his made-up friend for having conspiracy theories? And th th these type of videos where they put in this kind of silly music, it often to me seems like it's very confirmation bias. That they are what they think is a scientific theory and what they think is valid is valid. You know, it's like uh, to me, they, they always, these type of videos are always the same. They always have silly music in there. Uh, and it's like they're all, they'll always use conspiracy theories as, to, as their kind of uh, mirror, to mirror off of what their theories, which is like general relativity, et cetera. And none of it is scientific theories, but they want, it kind of bolsters up what they think is science as opposed to what they laugh at, which would be conspiracy theories. Right. Now, I have to say this, I'm not a conspiracy, a conspiracy theory person. They don't go around following them. conspiracy theories, they're not interested in them. But conspiracy theorists do tend to get things right, whereas none of these people get anything right in reality when it comes to what they prop up as science, which is like, you know, general relativity, etc. Right. Quick couple of shout outs. So shout out to Sensual Goat who gifted five memberships. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, yeah, Mr. Sam, Mike808, Arwin, Arwin, Slow Motion Moon Buggy and Dusty Rider all picked him up immediately. Also shout out to you, Godzilla37. I have a theory too. Am I now an astrophysicist? Um... Yeah, I mean, if you're want, wanting to lay down their standards, if if you can tie it with some graphs after looking through a telescope, then yes, Godzilla, absolutely you are. Oh, wow, shout out to Jardo, 20 bucks, thank you very much indeed. Germ theory or terrain theory? Germ theory, a load of nonsense. No, germ theory is based on scientific experimentation. Germ theory is science. You'll have to like it, Jardo, but thank you for the super chat. If you want to see something really funny, I can't remember who it was, who your opponent was. I think it was Geo Schreiber. But Betty Van Belsen, our illustrious leader, against Geo Schreiber. And she has him absolutely over a barrel with germ theory. It was priceless. And he's appealing to the chat to somebody who's a, a scientist for the maths for germ theory. Because he's asserting that maths is reality. Of course he is. He's a globe believer. And she asks him for the maths for germ theory. He goes to the chat to a professor of science uh, appealing for the maths and the professor's like uh yeah i'm not gonna be able to help you with that <laughs> it was brilliant yeah i can't remember what where to recommend that if someone knows where to get the link to that it was absolutely priceless and uh, well let's be honest betty is who she is because of what she can do and now she's done it in the past and she was doing it before all of us so if you don't know who betty is betty is the person who to, to you lay men just the person who runs the discord server but she's so much more so you know i don't need to get into how wonderful betty is and you might see us giving her crap as well which is almost as bad because it doesn't necessarily descend the uh importance of her and her role when we're just ribbing her well that's just us knowing that we can rib her but it's almost a respect thing you know it's us jabbing her because we know that she's in an authoritative position uh, and we can just get away with it as the naughty sales reps. Anyway, that's uh, that's the way it goes with Betty, and I just wanted to give her a quick shout out because of the <laughs> glorious victories with germ theory when it comes to fighting for science. So yeah, it's uh, one where yeah, I appreciate Jardy's super chat, but maybe look into germ theory. Um, also, Retro Bill, thank you very much indeed for the super chat. Regarding yesterday's show, ground level gases are allowed to rise before being pulled down, exerting an upward force on helium balloons, which simultaneously have a downward force exerted upon them. Thanks, Danny Faulkner. Oh, is that a, like a Danny Faulkner acclaim? Let's just read it again. Uh, ground level gases are allowed to rise before being pulled down, 
exerting an upward force on helium balloons, which simultaneously have a downward force exerted upon them. Thanks, Danny Faulkner. What Quite is a germ? A it says, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nice that he's put it into super yeah. chats for us to read. Or oh, just one last one. What is a germ? Says Jado. Maybe we'll go to Adam in a minute, Jado. But thank you for the super chat. We will definitely clarify it as you're paying for us to do so. Um, really appreciate all the support, by the way. Thank you for so many super chats and membership giving out and all that stuff. Please share the show, by the way. It's 80 people watching, which would be great if it was 150. Smash that share button. Can we, uh, can we comment on why they use conspiracy theory? Uh, obviously, it's an inflammatory statement to get the person to shut up or look foolish. But when we say, how can you have gas pressure without a container? Uh, immediately, instead of checking into uh, the meaning of those words and what the questioner is asking, oh, you're one of those conspiracy theorists. What's going on there, Nathan? It's just there, like I said, it's a, a way of demeaning somebody with having a, a label of kooky Cons conspiracy theorist means kooky then the pre-show before you guys arrived um we had um uh, a list of phrases that british people use well this is a bit like that in 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 what you mean versus what you say check out the pre-show if you're not a member if you are a member you'll see that in the pre-show is quite a laugh neil going through all those different phraseologies but yeah conspiracy theorist just means kooky idiot so when you hear that and someone's describing, I don't know, whatever that they have a conspiracy theory for, you'll immediately disregard it out of hand because there's some headline somewhere that's, that already has detailed the vague outline of what that person's going to say with the strapline conspiracy theorists above it. So you'll go, oh, yeah, I've heard this. You're one of those conspiracy theorists. All right. You're saying that's flat. Right. I've got a vague notion that that's kooky. You're a conspiracy theorist. Why would they lie? Right, but... Next question out of that person's mouth. Right, but if you're going to start off with Elvis as your base to contrast it to, and the next thing you're going to say is, oh, you think the earth is flat? And my friend thought Elvis uh, is still alive. You see what they're doing there? It's not the same thing, but they're doing it because they want to make you look, like you said, kooky, but they never address the questions. Yeah, I mean, in, in many respects, that was um, an issue that recently cropped up between, let me get the characters right, P brain and oh, who was it? I forgot who the other person was, but it was about Bigfoot. Um, Karen B. So Karen B is is saying that we should appeal as flat earthers to the crowd of people that are into Bigfoot because she was into Bigfoot and she found a way to flat Earth. Therefore, why not appeal to that audience to I don't know increase the numbers when Earth's an aspect? I mean that sort of non sequitur aside that was her appeal and uh p brain's response to it is to say oh right so it's not like people already think we're kooky enough and call us conspiracy theorists aka kooky let's hitch our wagon to nutters that say they see a giant ape in the forest okay yeah that's gonna be great Okay, so what is your reference to the Feast of Nonsense in this context? Feast of Nonsense is what you get fed when you arrive here. So, for instance, the, the notion of utilising a specific model, the Azimuthal Equidistant Projection or Gleason's Map, so that a, a globe believer can compare it to the projection in the last stage before it became that flat map of a globe and say, well, that map has come from a globe and doesn't work anyway. Show me how XYZ flight works on a map that works from the centre out with its latitude lines. And that's how it's supposed to work. Well, you can't. It won't work functionally in that way when you plot out a, a path that's moving in a straight line along one of the circles. Because it won't plot out straight. In the same way as you plot a straight line on a Mercator, it'll actually be a curved path in reality. But if you could take a curved path in reality, you can plot it straight on the map. Or whatever, which, which way around it goes. You're curving the line of the trajectory you actually take on the map because the straight line is curved in reality, right, on the map grid system. Well, they'll use all these things against you because you've suddenly decided that the map or model that you've been presented with at the Feast of Nonsense is the world. You get tricked into reification fallacies that you can have your opponent take apart based on the validity of the map as opposed to 
how the ground's measured, which is what we detail. So Feast of Nonsense is pre-qualified arguments given to you in the form of a controlled opposition, manufactured way of arguing your position, pre-made, on a plate, ready for you to use when you get here. Why? Well, because it seems like it's a really good argument that you could put to some normie and it might work a few times. But there's people who are into the argument for more than 10 seconds that will know how to overcome your argument when you show them a flat earth map and say that they're hiding it in plain sight at the UN. And they go, all right, show me this flight work on it. And because you've got a rudimentary understanding of how an azimuthal equidistant projection works, you won't even know it's come from a sphere, let alone know that the sphere has come from grid systems taken from flat earth elevation angle measurements to be wrapped around the sphere to then be laid out flat in your azimuthal projection that won't work when you plot straight lines on it for flights because that's not how the map works so you end up in this position where you're losing an argument about a map you didn't make a map you didn't claim that suddenly you're claiming is the world because of the feast of nonsense you gobbled down and spewed back up to some person that had a slightly better understanding of how maps and models work enough to say oh, it's a globe projection and you go all right all right that means it must be a globe then because i failed in this crappy argument i've gobbled down at the feast of nonsense yeah the feast of nonsense is a load of topics that are easy to debate for the opposition that's what they are yeah pre-rehearsed positions for you to take as a flat earther or as an anti-flat earther because they get their own feast of nonsense once they've slid down the hill and realized that there's something not quite um, quite right but they desperately want to scrabble back up to the hill of normality where all the rest of the normies are blissfully aware looking at the sunsets. They want to be back up there. But they've still got to be indoctrinated with a, a similar feast of nonsense to our own. And occasionally we see where the overlap comes in. But both of us need to be fed propaganda so we can rattle it off to the opposing side and it be in a, 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 a never-ending tussle between the people who've fallen down the hill. So what is the hill, metaphorically speaking? It's the lie that we were told and the realisation thereof doesn't matter if you come down that hill and are an anti-flat earther like conspiracy cats tossing and turning about how the world might be lying to you because you can't quite face the reality that they have lied to you. Well, us, we fall down the hill and go, we've been lied to, but wow, isn't the world a wonderful and fascinating place other than all these assholes telling us that we're wrong about the hill we just fell down together? So we all fight amongst ourselves and no finger of blame gets pointed up the hill. Not to the top of the hill that we just fell down, but to the hill above that with a castle on it with people in there with globes inside eating steaks. <laughs> yeah? Nobody points the finger of blame at anybody other than each other. So what are we doing? We're down here fighting with conspiracy cats. That's why I've, Brian did it about six months, maybe even 12 months ago, and just said, sod this. If you want to get into that tussle with us, and you're going to be complete assholes to us, and you're going to start pointing the finger of blame about lies that we've been told about the world we live in derived from flat earth elevation angles, and somehow that's our fault because you no longer believe the lies you were indoctrinated with, but really, really desperately need to keep them to keep your own sanity, well then, don't point the finger of blame at us. Point it up the hill. That's what we've been doing. You know, if you're an anti-flat earther watching this and go, no, I want to tell you how you're evil. Oh, all right, oh, fair enough. We've got sick of that quite a long time ago. But don't get me wrong, there's people who are still in our social circle, like Flatsoid, who address these tosses whenever they do a live stream. And good for Flatsoid. Someone's got to do it. But I'm not interested anymore. I'd rather point the finger of blame to the at least one rung down on the ladder, which is your your wizards of the of the religion, like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Now, in terms of what normie content gets punted out by YouTube, preferred content in this regard, we can just pull apart that and hope that that will in some way promote this channel so that more people get to actually be exposed to the lie and ultimately fall down that hill. Now, if they get to the bottom of the hill and want to start fighting with us because they've inadvertently stumbled across the channel as a result of someone leaving a comment that said Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me, then so be it. You know, I didn't make the hill and I'm not going to feel guilty anymore when people fall down it. Like, it's not my hill, right? I didn't put you at the top of it. I didn't dangle a mobile with planets on it above your bed when you were born. I didn't do any of that. So I'm not going to feel any guilt that you found out from me that it isn't the case. What's that? You feel angry? Because you know, I don't care. And I go away and be angry somewhere else because I'm sick of it. Yeah, I'm not angry anymore. I don't feel that. I don't feel like I need to go pickaxes and torch torches to NASA's door asking them why they lied. 
like with any deceit, you, you eventually figure out that the best course of action is to detach yourself completely and to divorce yourself completely from the person that's been peddling the lies to you. And in which case, well, that's how my show has developed here. I don't want to cover NASA. Do I want to knock on the doors of the liars? It only assists them when I look at their lies in detail. I don't need to do that to debunk everything they do. Just debunk space and then I never have to talk about NASA ever again. Well, they're the peddlers of the lie. They're the forefront of the media version of the lie. Well, I want to detach myself from liars. They don't benefit your life. At least they don't benefit my life. I'll speak for myself. All right, so you give them the, well, the psychopathy treatment, which yeah. is just completely detached. Which Absolutely. Is very wise because they're never going to change, right? They're never going to change what the problem is. Exactly. You're not going to get NASA to say, oh, yeah, we lied. We'll go and have a look again for you and tell you. Well, thank you for pointing out how deceitful. None of them are going to do that. Deceitful liars, they don't do that. And our and spot on. The attitude is the attitude I picked up from watching lots of videos about narcissism and psychopathy. Well, the approach is no contact ever again. Don't allow yourself to be triangulated. Well, triangulation in this instance would be people who come and present NASA stuff to us. Oh, I don't want to know about the deceit. So you just divorce yourself from all of it. Right? Then you're not influenced by it. The pain dissolves immediately. You know, because you don't care. When you look out at the horizon, you're not worried about whether or not the rockets on the TV that someone else is watching are indoctrinating them to a belief that there's a physical earth curve edge that they're going over when they dump the rockets into the ocean. You know, you're not concerned anymore. Why? Because you don't know. Ignorance is bliss in that regard. When it comes to deceit, you don't need to expose yourself to this deceit. The fact that you have and you found your way back out of the deceit, good for you. But then move on. You know, don't, don't worry about the lies. I know that's anti, you know, <laughs> anti my own show because I'm here talking about it daily. But I'm not worried about it ever. Why? Well, because the nature of Earth has realistically got no consequences to the individuals that stand upon it in terms of its aspect. Well, it doesn't affect you. I, I, when people say, what does it matter? What difference does it make? None. Nothing. What does matter? The sociological aspects of the lie itself. That's what matters. To you, not me. The ground is just the ground. It's flat. Does that have any bearing on my life? No, I've been walking around on it for quite some time, quite happily, doing my stuff. At the moment, doing my YouTube. Does it matter? No, not really. But in, in a wider, more broad understanding that you had until this moment, people had deceived you into something completely contrary to that. Now, that is still what it is. Earth's still flat and always was, and you're still going to walk around it on do your job and pay your mortgage tomorrow. But there's a social aspect that you haven't considered. That's that people have deceived you on a massive scale. Your entire worldview was a sham and a lie. Now, that doesn't influence you, and fair enough. Carry on watching complete lies and nonsense that doesn't mean anything. That's only there to scare you and keep you under control. Because obviously that has no difference on you. Just keep exposing yourself to the lie. What's the net result of that? Anti-flat earthers. That's the net result of that. Shout out to D-Rose. You says. Wait. Just one sec. NASA, all in capitals, armed force agencies of new nautical and aerial navigation themselves document in their own official files admission of a non-rotating flat earth. Yep, they've got to deal with earth as flat. That's what it is. They're going to disclaim it to the people who are actually dealing with it because if they have the idea that there's a void opening up ahead of them at 9.8 meters, at 9.8 meters, at 9, at 8 inches per mile squared, then there's an area that they could fly in that isn't really there. There isn't really space there at all. There's the ground to crash into because we are actually dealing with a flat plane. Not an area opening up ahead of you at eight inches per mile squared. There you go, I got it right the second time. Thanks well, for the I'd like to step back to. Sorry. Just go on, Brian. One second, Chocolate. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be quick. I just want to step back to the flat earthers and anti flat earthers who fall down that hill and then pick up their own version, the two feasts of nonsense that are there for them the one for the flat earthers and the one for the anti flat earthers. What, what happens there is it's a double delight for. The deceptor, because what what happens is it stops the person looking in the mirror, as opposed to being able to look in mirror in the mirror and go, "What do I actually know that, that I can actually prove?" You know what I mean? You end up having all these new things that are just as ridiculous as the old things in some ways. They might be a little bit closer to reality, but they're still stupid things that aren't going to help you in the long run. 
you know, regardless, even if any of them have any validity, you can't support whether they have any validity. Ice walls and domes and all this. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing you can do about it. And conspiracy so, theories. Is, uh, and conspiracy theories. Is, we will get you chocolate. But Tenth was saying, all right, how did the tie with the brush of conspiracy theory? Well, when I got here, what was it, 2014, 15, something like that, um, there was clone centres, Mandela effect, all of it being offered up right next to Flat Earth. So you're like, oh, wow, there's a lot of crap around this, isn't there? Well, that's totally intentional. Why? Well, because at the Feast of Nonsense back in 2014, the people who were there going, mm, nom, 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 flat earth. Mm, nom, 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 clone centres. Mm, what? There could be a clone of Taylor Swift. Mm. <laughs> Just idiots gobbling down whatever crap they came across because the first thing they found, flat earth in this instance, made a bit of sense to them. They didn't have a real deep understanding of it. But what they did see was... Mandela effect. Mmm, tasty. Yum, 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 yum. I'll spew that up too. Well, I think, Nathan, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Sorry, Chocolate, just very quickly before you get in. I think it wouldn't be a bad idea, because if we want to suggest this to you weeks ago, to uh, actually maybe do a reaction videos to some of the bigger conspiracy video, uh, conspiracy theorism videos out there. Because they're very much on par with the heliocentric videos that, you, that we do here. They're, like they just take those same heliocentric concepts and start adding in some conspiracy around it, but it's just as much nonsense. And some of those channels have as just as many subscribers. I'm way ahead of you. So when, about three months ago, maybe a bit longer, I started thinking exactly those lines, but thinking what is an aspect that I could get into that's got mainstream appeal and understanding, but directly relinked to heliocentric faith. Well, the answer is Scientology. The problem is I don't want to necessarily cover it until I've got a really good understanding of it. So, you know, three months into watching a few videos on it, I'm not going to claim to be some Scientology expert. But I totally agree, Brian, that there's going to be other aspects of, of conspiracy that we can go through and, and directly address how, you know, David Icke's using aspects of heliocentrism to claim we've got, what, a base in the moon? All right, well, that would re re revolve around the notions of heliocentrism. So you just pull apart his claims based on the failings in heliocentrism and what you're doing is a, a double whammy anybody who types in david Unk, D david ike debunked comes across us debunking the conspiracy theory that they were so elated to see get pulled apart because they want to call him a conspiracy theorist but the debunking isn't actually what they thought they were going to get because it's pulling apart the notions of not being able to describe heliocentric orbits or the church giving you the timings for easter with orbital motions and assumptions of venus being the same size as earth and all of the things that we would debunk heliocentrism with just directed towards debunking their conspiracy theory incorporated within the heliocentric faith that they hold. They just didn't realise it. Flat Earth had an impact there as well. Um, Into your mic. Sorry. Um, the um, David Icke comment, um, pre-COVID, that it was put to him, and he wasn't saying it's flat, he was just describing all sorts of possibilities now, as opposed to that very much heliocentric paradigm that he painted. Um, but he's very careful there now. It's not like the David Wilcoxes, they're still out there, with diminished views, but um, I think there's an impact being made there, solely because his son, Gareth's a big flat earther, I think. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, but 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 the yeah, I'd I'd seen that change, but yeah, Gareth's a flat earther, so I'm sure he's well pestered the shit out of his dad and had fun pointing out all of the flat earth issues for him. Oh well, maybe he's a sympathetic ear. What? Not that I necessarily care about who we get endorsements from. David Dyke, he's just the same as next man. Again, we take what he said at face value based on the subject he was talking about, as opposed to his past experiences and talking about being Jesus or whatever he did on Wogan. Well, I, I wouldn't even consider David Icke even to be the first choice. Uh, actually, far from it. There's a good few other conspiracy theorists who are in America who are far more, uh, uh, far more uh, heliocentric than David, David Icke. And what they, what they talk about and have been talking about for years is purely heliocentric. So he would actually wouldn't be my first choice. There'd be loads before him. Um, just say, just say it's more to, more to thought. Did you know I talked to David Icke like in 2011 face to face and I was already into flat earth and then I forgot about it again. But like he's very neutral about it. He's not an anti-flat earther. He's like, oh yeah, sure. 
your ideas, I'll stick to mine. That's like what he's like with it. Speaking of no, speaking no, of no. Arwin, Godzilla thirty seven says, I have a theory that Arwin is a millionaire. Help make this theory scientific fact by having all your friends PayPal him and their friends and their friends and their friends. Let's do this. I agree. I agree. Let's do it. Yeah, links to PayPal for Arwin are not below this video, but you can subscribe today to Arwin for daily early bird shows. We go out before this debate. So check it out. Thanks yeah, currently chat. on D Live, but I'll be back on YouTube uh, tomorrow or Thursday. Okay. Right, let's do a bit more. Good morning, of this video. guys. Hey, Chocolate. Oh, yeah. Ages ago, I said that you could get a point in, and then I've forgotten you, haven't I? My bad. Go ahead. 100 people watching, though. Timing. Uh, so, I'm not even sure I remember the point now. It's been like <laughs> so long. Uh, something about, oh, when you brought up, uh, I don't know, I don't know who said it, the super chat about documents, NASA's documents and stuff. But I just wanted to say that that's one of, one of my favorite things when I first got into this is watching the, the Globers, how they had to try to scramble and give reasons as to why all these military documents, NASA documents, all these things say that we take the Earth as a flat stationary plane. It's, it's, it was one of my favorite things, because it's like, you know, oh, because the map is simple and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's like, this doesn't, and it's funny because it didn't, that, that type of thing doesn't really register with normies. Like, you don't really know that until you get into this topic. And then you realize how many of these official military and NASA documents say that it's just flat and stationary. That's how they take it anyway. And it's like watching the Globers all these years trying to scramble for that. It's, it's been one of my favorite things. So I just wanted to add that. That was mad long ago. So. Some people say that these are just theories. And but Yeah, we do. We distinguish the ones that were scientific, though, didn't we? We pointed out the colloquial theories and qualified them versus the scientific ones. Believe that they have not been proven by science. No, they hadn't, with the exception of germ theory. Was there another one? I forget. But from my memory, you only had one that actually had... Oh, no, you had quantum mechanics in there too. So, yeah, you had a yeah, couple that were backed by science. Sorry, he might, he might be adding in quantum field theory into that, so it's it dodgy area. Oh, God, not that again. <laughs> I'm he sure didn't he say quantum mechanics, he said quantum theory. He did. They talk and think about them as somehow inferior ideas about how the world works because they're called theories rather than... No, no, it's down to the qualification of whether or not they've been based on a phenomena that you want to know the cause of, the formulation of a hypothesis with an alternative and null, and then the variation of that which you assume causes the effect in what's known as an experiment to validate either the alternative or the null so that you can then form a scientific theory. The rest of them are men down the pub talking about how all the world came out of nothing. That's mathematically dividing by zero and getting everything in the known existence. Because you have in your list Big Bang. Right, that's a guy down the pub saying everything came out of nothing. Why? Because he made it up himself. Yeah, that's a colloquial theory not backed by systematic experimentation based on a hypothesis after observing a phenomena that you want to know the cause of and validated the cause by varying it and causing the effect, a.k.a. experiment. That's science. That's the scientific method. That's what we validate the claim of theory with because that's the only standard here. For you, you put up, what, facts, proven, talk about them, laws. These things aren't science. Systematic experimentation based on hypothesis, that's science. Rather than say facts or laws. But these people are mistaken. It's not entirely their fault. It's because the word theory doesn't mean quite the same thing in the world of science as it does when used in general conversation. Yeah, but you've just used it and interchanged it between the two when you convoluted theory of relativity with germ theory. One of those has got scientific validation and one hasn't. Where it can mean a guess or a hunch or something that isn't quite known for sure. No. <laughs> no, that's part of the scientific experimentation-based, hypothesis-based method. 
So making a guess would be you suppose the cause of the effect you're studying. That's part of the method. It's not the method. It's not the entire method. It's not one isolated part that you could call the method if you did just that. It's just one section of the scientific method. Suppose the cause of the effect. It's your A statement in the alternative when you form a hypothesis. If A, your supposed assumption of the cause, then the effect you're studying, that's B. You also have a null. If A, the supposed cause, your supposition, your presupposed cause that you haven't validated yet, then not effect, that's not B. Both can't be true. So when you vary A and C if it causes B, it either causes it or doesn't and validates the null or validates the alternative. That's how science works. So you've got to assume yeah. a cause to put it through the method. When scientists right. call something oh, oh, a Nathan. theory, they mean... So, yeah, go ahead, Darwin. Sorry. So this is very ironic. I mean, he's pointing out the whole, the difference between the use of the word science while he gets it wrong. So he's misapplying it and then pointing out basically what he's doing wrong without realizing that it is what he is doing. This yes, is exactly. I'm yeah, reading it that. slightly different. I'm reading he's, he's trying to make the distinguishment between a colloquial theory and a theory, a scientific theory, whilst trying very hard not to mention experiment as being integral in that because in his theories, relativity and Big Bang theory, he's not going to have experiments. I'm just getting the feeling he's, he's trying to make that distinguishment, but not able to do so because the true distinguishment that it's based on empiricism and experiment to form maybe lots of experiment to form a theory is kind of undermines what probably what his theories he's going to cite are that have this credibility score he's demonstrating. In a so surely that is credibility that... axis is only the experiments that yes. back up the theory. Yeah, that's the defining factor for whether or not you've got a theory if you've got a validated experiment. He hasn't said that yet. We've said it multiple times. Does three things. One, a scientific theory puts forward a comprehensive explanation. That's incorrect. So a theory isn't an explanation. It's only an explanation if you've had a scientifically validated hypothesis validated through experiment. So it, you can't start with theory. Yeah, that's the end, not the beginning. So it doesn't put something forward. It describes what you did in the experiment that's been validated. So he's confusing theory with a bastardized hypothesis because a hypothesis isn't an explanation either because you've got both the null and the alternative, which are in contradiction to one another. It violates the law of non-contradiction if you use it as an explanation. But he's describing that as though that's a theory. Wrong on both counts. For things we observe in nature. To... No, nope. things we observe in nature are just things we observe in nature. Like birds. That's something I observe in nature. Is it a phenomena? No, birds aren't a phenomena. That's a concrete noun. It's just a bird. But if you're putting something through the method of science to establish a cause of an effect then it's something happening in nature. That's step one, observe natural phenomena. A scientific theory provides strong evidence for that explanation. No, the evidence would be the outcome of the experiment. That's your evidence in the scientific method. You have a phenomena, you assume you know what's going to cause it, you go forth to validate that presumed cause of the effect by varying it. If it does cause the effect, that's scientific evidence. The validated outcome of an affirmed scientific-based experiment. That's evidence in science. Yeah, Not what the theory describes when you bastardise what a hypothesis is when you describe it as an explanation and call it a theory. You got it completely arse about face. Just going to shout out this super chat and then I'm going to tell the audience who've just joined us what we're doing. Uh, just ordered a centrifuge for my plasma experiment. <laughs> Somebody who's obviously a regular on the show. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Identify verification. Really appreciate your support. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bit of an in-joke, but still, if you're paying, more power to you. Okay, so, <laughs> right, let's get back to this. It's completely thrown me with that, but it was funny. And three, perhaps most importantly, a scientific theory provides ways to make predictions. Told you. 
No, the prediction stage is the hypothesis stage. It predicts the cause of the effect. It also predicts that your supposition won't cause the effect. That's what a prediction is. A scientific prediction is a hypothesis. This guy's saying the prediction stage comes in theory. No, you just so stories relabeled as theory. Like relativity. This is what's, this is what's validating, yeah, relativity, astrophysics. This is their way. So we make an observation, we make a prediction from that observation. And if we still observe the prediction, then the initial theory was correct. That's that's kind of their observational based validation, which is all you can do in astrophysics, isn't it? Right. Observe and declare, make up a just so story, yeah. call it a theory, and then justify it with this garbage. No, well, it works for 1.3 million subscribers until we come along and say, no, no that's not what science is. You know, it's not a justifiable explanation, a.k.a. just so story. Because your prediction in a hypothesis would be a supposition that's yet to be validated that has both the predicted cause of the effect and the antithesis. That's a null. I won't cause the effect if you vary it. So it's definitely not an explanation. There isn't any explanation. There's only scientific evidence at the end of the process if you validate your cause. It sounds like a lot of the time they, they're just interested in making predictions that predict other predictions that make more predictions. It's kind of silly. It, it's like they did a, a fantastic okie doke between making predictions and actually uh, validating something. Or uh, it, it's... I don't know. Every time I hear them say, oh, this theory, quote unquote, makes predictions, therefore it's true. It's like, uh, are you actually making predictions or are you just recognizing patterns? Because that's the okie doke. Oh, we recognize a pattern. That's a prediction we made. And therefore, the theory based on that prediction is validated. It's like, no, you, you saw the sun come up. Uh, it came up again and, and again and again. That, that's just recognizing a pattern. That's not making predictions. You see, I, I can make a prediction with germ theory because of some of the validation. But I think that's very different to what he's postulating here. He's trying to postulate further understanding by more observation and predicting an observation. That's not what you do using the scientific knowledge you've gained or, let's say, with germ theory. You're not going to use it to make an un uninformed prediction you're going to your prediction will be based on the evidence the sign the, the experiment you had to make that prediction i.e if i put it if i cough on this agar plate and stick it in a warm place it'll grow it, it's, it's based on that not what's happening here which is to take one observation that we like the explanation of and then go <laughs> make further prediction on based on something else we might see and if we see it it proves everything very different use of prediction that, that's what I'm saying. Like, how many times over the years have you heard a global say, oh, we have a globe model and it works because it makes predictions, right? That, that's like their, their disclaimer all the time for their quote-unquote globe model. Yeah, because it, like how he's justified, he's saying predictions are theories when they're not. They're hypotheses and they have the antithesis of the prediction so they can't be called explanations because you can't have A cause B and A not cause B which is what an alternative and a null is in a scientific prediction. Yeah, They just take models and pseudoscience, strap on the word prediction, strap on the word theory, as in relativity in this example, and steal valour from the actual sciences that have given them advancements in humanity. That's what the actual sciences have given people. One of the examples is germ theory. Right, let's just give uh, the actual process that we would like to go on here, a quick plug, which is to say that we're reacting to the Royal Institution channel, which is a very highly subscribed to channel and is absolute asinine nonsense about what a theory is when it comes to scientific validity. So let him know, Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me with a comment, maybe say, uh, we really enjoyed watching your video over on the Nathan Oakley 1980 channel where they responded to it, gave you a like, or whatever you want to say to not get your comment deleted. But more importantly, if the person was ever to respond, and is the case with all of these response videos that we make, we would hope that they would do the same, return the favour and put a link to Nathan Oakley 98 channel in their video. When they say, oh, no, no, no. When I said theory and then described a hypothesis as an explanation, 
I actually was right because of this citation that says that astrophysicists say that when they make up a story and call it a theory, that makes it science. Therefore, I'm right. Subscribe to Data Nathan Oakley. Here's a link to his channel. ...about the aspects of the world it explains, which we can then test by further observation. In everyday conversation... You don't test by observation, OK? To test, you vary that which you assume causes the effect and see if it causes it. How do you test by observation? So you see something happening. Oh, volcano. Look away. Look back at volcano. Is that, is that testing by observation? No, no. Testing something means variation and manipulation of the assumed cause of the effect in nature you are studying. That's what you do. That's you as a researcher taking your A statement, if A, and taking A, which must be physically manipulatable by you, the researcher, and the A statement in your hypothesis, your supposed cause. It's also the A statement in your null. That is to say, your presumed cause, when varied, won't cause the effect. It must be real. No gravity as an A statement, because you can't vary and manipulate something that doesn't exist beyond mathematics. Those are the prerequisites for something to be varied in an experiment. And if you do cause the effect you're studying, that's evidence, scientific in nature, that can form theory. We can dismiss someone's idea about something. By no, you don't dismiss ideas. You dismiss and disqualify that which you can only rule out upon experimentation. So the dismissal is the dismissal of the null hypothesis because it can't simultaneously hold true that A does not cause B if you vary A and it causes B. It violates the law of non-contradiction. So the only part of a scientific-based process that's going to give you empiricism that has a discounting element to it is discounting the null or alternative if you prove it to be true in the contrapositive. So if you prove your null to be true, that's A doesn't cause B, then automatically you can't assert that A does cause B, meaning you discount the alternative. That's where it comes into the process. Bearing in mind that we have got, what, just under 25,000 subscribers in, in this channel with people listening to us. This guy's got 1.34 million and he's talking this utter garbage. Totally incorrect. Wrong. With pictures of mathematicians like Einstein. Saying it's just a theory. But no, just a colloquial theory versus scientifically validated experimentation based on a hypothesis after observing natural phenomena. We can't dismiss the theories of Darwin and Einstein. Yeah, we can, because they've got no scientific validity to them. They're men down the pub with stories. This is a great video, Tenth. <laughs> and other great scientists in the same... Great scientists? So people who have applied the scientific method to cause and effect reasoning after observing phenomena, these men are not that. You wouldn't know a scientist if it slapped you around the face. You don't know what science is. But this is preferred content on YouTube. Yeah, this is what YouTube promotes. It's utter nonsense. We, meanwhile, won't get the slightest bit of promotion. We won't be finding our way into anybody's lists that haven't already heard of us. But for the fact that you've gone to his channel and said Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me. Meanwhile, this will propped up as preferred content by YouTube when it's utterly incorrect. Way. In science, an idea about how the world works usually only gets accepted as a theory once it's been tested and shown to be supported by observations and other evidence. No, testing is an experiment. The ideas don't get tested. The presumed cause of effects get tested to form theories. Whether or not they're accepted is you convoluting the idea of men around a table agreeing with each other about some maths and whether or not it's our reality versus the systematic experimentation based on a hypothesis that is the actual scientific method. This is an outrage. Things that are distinctly lacking from theories about Elvis's continued existence. What, the colloquial ideas of asinine men versus the asinine theories of men that said that everything was born out of nothing when you divide by zero in maths of Big Bang? Both equally stupid. Neither backed by science. Alien visits to the Earth and shape-shifting reptiles. Alien visits from a sky vacuum-based heliocentric system, with relativity being a part of it, yet you do have aliens in your world of a sphere and a sky vacuum. But yet you're dropping that in like it's an asinine theory. It's part of your globe world. It's running the world. 
What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't make sense to belittle an idea in science by... Yeah, an idea in science? Yeah, an idea in science, if you want to loosely qualify it as such, would be your idea about what causes a phenomenon you've seen in nature and want to study. Your idea yet to be validated. That's the, about as loose as you can get to the connection of the scientific method, which you definitely aren't doing. What bloody outrage. Why are we stuck at the bottom of the list never getting recommended? And this guy's getting 1.34 million subscribers. What the hell is going on with the world? By saying it's just a theory. No, by saying it's not science. You putting quote marks around just a theory, because when someone comes up with something about Elvis, you can say that's just a theory. But when someone says something about everything coming out of nothing, you can say that's science when it isn't. Science is the application of the scientific method. Cause and effect reasoning based on a hypothesis after observing natural phenomena to validate it and form a theory. Because when scientists refer to an idea as a theory... Oh, all right, all right, that's when the pseudoscience comes in. When scientists, in quotes, refer to an idea... No, no, ideas aren't theories. Your idea about what might cause an effect might be called a hypothesis, but a theory is based on the experiment that's been validated that you haven't detailed. Theory... Well, they're giving it the highest praise it can have. So are you when you call relativity a theory. Yeah? When people tell us that gravity's got theory behind it and science behind it. When the globe Earth itself is exclaimed to have the whole body of science behind it. You're right. That's just stealing valour from an actual method of empiricism known as the scientific method. Got to pause it, otherwise the music might get me a strike. That was it. Well, we ripped out an absolute new one. Go and let this person know. Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me. It's the only way we get any promotion. Because this numpty dipshit has managed to get 1.34 million subscribers by being wrong about every single aspect of science. By convoluting and blurring the lines between pseudoscience, just so stories that he calls theories, versus... Pseudoscience just so stories from men down the pub that are no different. Didn't detail what science actually was, but let him know we really enjoyed his video over at Flat Earth Debate when we responded to it. Well, well you detailed it, Nathan, so why don't you have these million subscribers? I don't know, Neil, and I'm quite bitter about it. Me too. Uh, that, that, actually, that whole video, your man that made that, like, the, what a pointless video. It was purely, as I said, uh, early, early into it, purely confirmation boys for himself and whoever follows that kind of rubbish. You know, silly music and a lot of talk about what they, what they deem as some kind of val val validated uh, um, uh, topics. You know, it's ridiculous. The hip and nothing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I thought, what, how, I don't know how many thousand views it's a nothing video, absolute nothing but silly music. That's what it was. No, actually, that music was because he was at a pub and it was the background noise. And with that, I'm going to say, if you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley premiering streams, then stay tuned. So there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, though, if you are watching this live, this is where we bid you farewell. So another massive thank you to all of you who smashed the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, joined as a member, gifted memberships and all that good stuff. Of course, another massive thank you to today's Discord and G Plus panels for making today's live show possible. Once again, stay tuned if you're watching on an after show. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video. While you guys in the live stream still doing, click on the link. Go and let that guy know at the Royal Institution, Nathan Oakley, 1980, sent me. Seriously, what are you still doing here? Go, now. Click the link. Tell him.
the chocolate. They, they, already they done it. Doing, already did it. I left a very, I left a very nice comment. I said Nathan Oakley sent me, and I'm appreciative and elated, and I and I'm and I'm looking forward to subscribe and stay tuned. Very informative, with a thumbs up. Oh, that's exactly perfect. You don't want to get your comment deleted. Right. No, I can't. Oh, do I want to also, also, I also want to mention, I want to apologize. I listened back to the other show that I was on. And um, this is what I'm going to do. Like I had said when I first came here, I'm used to being on discords where they do mute the mic and to show concurrence or that you applaud or you agree with somebody instead of doing the, um, uh-huh, yep, yep. What they do is they tap the mic several times rapidly. And that's that's a sign to show to say that they are, you know they agree like they're snapping their fingers or clapping their hands and that's what I'm gonna do for now on because no, I did don't listen do back and I was like, no absolutely no, do not no. do that no just don't say anything no. just yeah just wait for you to talk and then say it when you're comment talking comment section and it's full yeah, of true. soccer accounts so what you're saying is zero it, at the moment, comments loads of them are we? what are you're we? saying oh just one sec what you're saying is when someone's saying the most agreeable thing possible that you agree with wholeheartedly to the point where you would applaud it, you're going to tap on the mic and cut their mic so no other fucker can hear it. No, definitely don't no, do that, please. No, no. It, it doesn't cut them off whether you can't hear them, unless I have noise in the background, which I won't. It's just like a... Does but it make a sound? Don't does it make a sound when I do that? No, don't. Don't make okay. sound when someone okay, else got, is making a glorious point. I can't, I can't stress that enough. I got, you, I got you. I got you, Nathan. I'm just asking, does it make a noise when you do that to the microphone? I can't hear the noise. Yeah, like, for example, Quantum okay. Eraser going, yeah, right over the top of the most important disclaimer and concession that was made by Andrew Learns. You know, I mean, sometimes the colour commentary is good, and sometimes you could throttle the guy. <laughs> no, no, Nathan, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about doing... Yes. The, Just the, what uh, I, 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 can't, I can't see anything good about hitting the mute button that many times while somebody else is speaking. It's probably just better if you don't do any of that. <laughs> just wait for them to stop. All right. Gotcha. And then, you know what I'm saying? Because Discord is weird with that, and Nathan's, you know, bugged out about his audio, so... That's I'm probably, not yeah, bummed I'm out about my audio. Let's get that straight. No, no, no. no, no, no. He's I, right. Not I, bummed out. You know what I mean. I, I do know what you mean, but what I mean is that everything's very carefully and sensitively gated. Yeah. To, to, to try and stop it so that you can still hear somebody who's interjecting, but you also don't get audio chaos. But things like people going, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. You can still hear them because it's not gating them out of your mic. You're gating them for everyone else in my system because they're all cross-channel. And you can easily get massive amounts of feedback if I don't do that. So I've got to be, I've got to be careful, but you can easily cut someone else's line right in the most important bit if you talk while they're talking. And I will never do that again. That's what I'm saying. But I, I guess I'm used to the other chat rooms that I'm talking about. They don't. They when you do that, it doesn't make a noise like. Bloom, 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 bloom. It doesn't do that when you um, you know. Uh, no, when they're you designed tap the not mic. to. On an individual server by server or software by software basis. If I was just in G plus talking to them, so when the show ends, often we'll have. I won't, but the guys will still stay in G plus and chat away, and there's never any audio chaos because it's just one isolated program. And w but when you link Skype with G+, yeah. with my mic, what? with Discord, and then someone like just then has some noise coming with from the Neil. background, like that, th that's going to cause a bit of chaos. It just You can't be helped. He said there's no audio chaos when we're just talking amongst ourselves. I don't know. got to come in and have a listen sometimes. Because Arwen, it's Arwen's show after show. Is that right? You should broadcast it, Arwen. <laughs> I like the way... <laughs> So I, just, I like the way Neil just Either completely took him back out of the equation. <laughs> Ar Arwen, are you okay under that bus, Arwen? You all right? What? He seems fine. He seems fine. <laughs> we'll scrape him up later. Getting blamed for are audio you chaos. Something? <laughs> You're getting blamed for audio chaos, that's all. No, I Me? just said that in the after show, Arwen, when Nathan rounds out the after show, when we're still on, it's your show. My show. Nathan, I have another video there if you want to do another reaction video now. That's not to worry about. I'm 
Einstein one, right? Dr. Becky, yeah, I want to hear Dr. that. Dr. Becky, yeah. Dr. Becky, yeah. Oh, do we have to do another? Can't we leave a bit more of a gap? We don't, like. Video, video, video. Save, save it for tomorrow. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind doing it, but uh, I just want some. Uh, new leave it, leave it for tomorrow. Don't be well, dead. I just well, how, about a couple of minutes? How, about, how about a couple of minutes? No, because you're ruining the same. Which is the start that you have to do with you. Oh, you can't restart okay. it tomorrow. Well, let's yeah. let's not have dead 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 minutes, as Brian says here. So, um, chocolate, go ahead. You want to say? No, I was just going to ask Nathan. Are you trying to give Doctor Becky some time off from from us? Is that, <laughs> is that what it is? Nah, just it's today. I prefer doing stuff like we did today because I've never heard of this channel, right? You've never heard of this channel, but they've got one point three million subscribers. How many's Becky got? That's all it boils down to. Uh, you might have a couple of million. No, but, I get you. But, you know, it's, it's a different audience base suddenly. Um, I, I missed the show yesterday. Unfortunately, I was taking care of something. But, Nathan, if you go back, I, I put some typical original D. Rosa, strong opinionated comments. What, in the about, members video? Yeah, about computer dude, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw him when I woke up. Yeah. I mean, the computer dude's just a normie, and he's a good guy, right? And in the same way, we might have an off-the-cuff reaction to some of the weird conspiracy theory. Yeah, let's tar it with the brush that he tars it with. So we see something new, not Bigfoot or Aliens, or something that was mentioned in that video by like Elvis, but something else that we go, oh, that sounds like a load of old nonsense, right? Rivers of lava running beneath our feet comes up as a conspiracy theory, just as something that I've made up literally on the spot. And we go, I can't want a load of nonsense. Just completely disregard it in a live stream because someone in the chat says there's rivers of lava beneath all of us. And then, what do you know? Somebody comes along and says, actually, I've been studying this for the last eight years. It's real. Here's how. And you go, oh, my God. Uh, now I seem a little bit stupid and dismissive. But you can appreciate why it seems so nonsensical off the cuff, like Flat Earth does to this guy. when. Shelley was in his chat going, you know, they're launching the rockets, but they're going into, into the ocean. So, on the one hand, I don't... I, I appreciate a normie reaction to it. And previously, I'd have gone, it seems unfair to shove him down the hill. Now I just think, I don't care, it's not my hill. I didn't put it there. It's not my fault he stood at the top of it thinking he's on a sphere. This is no normie, Nathan. I don't know if you knew who you were critiquing today. This oh. is the Royal Institution. No, no, no. So, Yesterday. I'm talking about the no. guy who talks about graphics cards, not the Royal Institution. Well, say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you, you know what, this is the Christmas lectures. This is a really prestigious thing. That we as kids grow up, certainly I used to love the Christmas lectures. It was the things that taught you science um, as a kid, you know, outside of school. Um, I'm su surprised the Royal Institution because I don't remember it being that wishy-washy as that video was um, well i'm i'm scrolling through it and they still make it that's one video we reviewed was like eight years old but they still make videos regularly and it's filled with with all the astrophysics nonsense so there's a clear direction that they've taken just well, that's, browsing through our videos the, that's what they have to show we should do is summarize why they have diluted the scientific method to this extent as Nathan pulled it apart. It's so they can grease the skids for astrophysics, observe and declare. Well, I think they have Danny the Falk guy, comment again. Right. Re regarding the computer guy, I just look at it like this. Especially if you have a channel that specifies in something else, computers, flash drives, hard drives, keyboards, mouses, yada, yada. Stay in your lane. Don't use that platform to mock flat earth proponents. You can say, and I respect if you would say, you know, um, from what I've learned, and you saw, you read my comment, Nate, that's it. From what I've learned, I believe, you know, I'm not sure, I, I can't prove it. You know, like a lot of people are on the fence. But when you get on there and you use that platform to, to me, it was like he went after implicitly, whether you want to say it or not, but he went after the flat earth. I mean, advocacy 
D. Rose, and I don't think I he, would should, disagree he should with stay you. in his lane. I would disagree with you. You can't tell someone to stay in your lane. That's what's being oh, no, used against no, 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 us. No, 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 that's rhetorical. Yeah, that rhetorical. I kind of agree. That was rhetorical. That was rhetorical. Even... That was rhetorical. That I know, was rhetorical. He's, I, I I know the principle that, that you're yeah. driving at. You're saying, look, if you're covering architecture, then don't talk about cosmology. You know, it's just that simple because you're, you're going to make yourself look a fool. Now, in this respect, right. I, I get this, I, the sentiment I get, but you, the way you're phrasing it is, you know, don't expand off, don't branch off, stay in your lane. Well, and tenth response is to say, well, that's why we are stuck in the lane of nowhere because <laughs> people have gone. Not just telling you to stay in your lane, we're going to put you in your lane. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, right. Uh, I think. Well, let me extend. Role, let, me, let me extend that ten. Let me extend that ten. Don't stay in your lane. Otherwise, you're going to. If you're going to put your mouthpiece and helmet on, when you get on the field, don't complain about how hard you get hit on the field. So what I'm saying well, is, this is he stepped into the, he stepped no, into the dome, into the octagon. So I think he was treated accordingly to be exposed. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, at least he should have stayed in his lane. I, I like it. I like it when they get out of their lane. I like it because so, it's so more I. information for us to say, look at the look at the feast of nonsense that they they bought into it without vetting out if it was theory in the colloquial sense versus a scientific theory, and they're now spouting it out, and they have this expertise in this field. But look what, and then it makes for a great show today. That was so easy for Nathan to tear apart. He, the guy said so many wrong things. Okay, this is today the science channel, let alone the guy on the computer. Look how bad it is. This is great. So the guy who's the guy who's well, let me finish. The guy who is in his lane, the guy speaking on today's, as Adam said, this was something he grew up watching because he represented science. He got it all wrong. Then the guy yesterday, who's got a computer expertise, decides to jump into this guy's lane today and go against us. Well, they both got, uh, let's just say, battered pretty good. When you put it that way, that's a great Hold on one second, Dave. One second. Let me say something real quick. I like it because you know it's like we're giving them so much doing it hanging up. Absolutely, Neil. I think we'll probably cover it next Tuesday. And it's a perfectly valid point. We all agree. I think we all are in agreement with Neil. Wouldn't you all agree? (laughs) I'm robotting, right? Okay, I got it. Right, but guys, well, only you could, to make a point. guys, could you please check Skype? Look at what I just dug up from the Royal Institution. I mean, this one, that's wow. Okay. And when one, you put it that way, though, you put it... just, just on, sorry, one, it was. No, when you put it that way, Tim, you nailed on it because it shows you so many different diversified, Um, you know, different spectrums of the, the the errors that they have. You got the specialists, you got the experts, you got the guy to just fix computers. So I, I agree. I, I got you. That's what makes our review yeah. videos so phenomenal. You're right. Yeah, but the, 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 the problem with this, the, the, with the flat earth thing, is this. It's been treated like people treated uh, or have treated. Let's just say, I'm not, not going to name any names now, okay? So don't go name them. But fine with that. Uh, let's say recent uh, viruses, war, and movement, right? Racial movement, where people jumped on the bandwagon without doing any research about anything and just like, ignored people who were actually trying to give them some real facts and just kind of went with the narrative. And flat earth is the same. People just go with the narrative. And that's what that guy yesterday did. He just went with the narrative. The narrative is, is that you go against this. Yo, when the narrative switches to you go with this, he'll be promoting it. Because he just goes with the narrative. And I, and I think when, uh, I think when, uh, when D said that he should stay in his own lane, uh, I agree with that uh, as much in, uh, as in I'm not going to go talking about computers uh, if I don't know what I'm talking about. So it's not that he shouldn't branch into other topics, but he shouldn't make definite judgments on things without having actual, uh, without having actually having actually uh, researched something on them. Yeah, that's the problem yeah, that's... with a lot of these people. They don't do research on anything. 
and they just go with whatever narrative they they, they're ex- they think they're expected to go along with. Go on, then. But that's the yeah. Thank you, Brian. That's the point. See, this guy, the computer guy, he he listens to guys like we listen today, and they're the experts. The experts get it wrong. Okay, then the computer guy who trusts the experts has to mimic them. So he's got the wrong secondhand information wrong. So then one day takes apart the computer guy's secondhand information that he trusted the source. Today, Nathan takes apart the source, which is a channel on this subject, not on computers. And now you can see how people have been programmed for this reaction. Science, science, science. Uh, the, the, it's like the mayor of Chicago, you know, having a globe next to her and science saying, we got science, back, baby. baby. Science is back, baby. Yeah, it's like, what? I mean, so it's it's a bunch of parroting on pseudoscience. It's not even the right scientific theory. It's 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 everyday language theory, you know, just what people do on a normal basis. It hasn't gone through any hypothesis. It hasn't gone through any testing. No, there's no differences between the variables. There's none of that in this stuff. And so when we take it apart, what what people see is that, oh, man, Nathan just took them apart. But what I see is, wow. This guy who should know it is influencing this guy who's trusting him, and no wonder everybody's confused. So it's like even, killing even the sources. Just one second. Even the sources, like let's just say the Royal Institution, even t- sources like that for people like the guy from yesterday have become so terribly bad. I remember uh, listening to some of those type of sources back years ago, and I'm going even back pre-internet, and what the information you would get, even if it was some of it was pseudoscience, there was more meat on the bones, there was more something. You, know, you had somebody of no talking to you. But that video that was played earlier, that's supposed to be the Royal Institute, which is supposed to be like a, a, a spokes, um, not a spokesperson, but a, an institute that speaks for science, whatever the hell that A means. representative. Yeah, representative. Sorry, I couldn't think of it. I was sick. Uh, thanks, Aaron. A representative. And uh, why are they pumping? There, there was a completely pointless video of, a lo- of nothing. There was nothing in it. So this is the problem. People now these days on the internet, they get a, a whole heap of nothing. You know, um, uh, and there's no substance to anything they're learning. And uh, that's, you know, and, and, and they go to, because the Royal Institute, as Adam said, uh, uh, from what Adam said, it was a lot better years ago. If you thought it was bad eight years ago, which is the video we just reviewed, just check out this one, okay? I'll just tell you the title. Is it our moral duty to explore other planets? That's the title. So that's on the on the Royal Institute you know, or, from a year ago. New doors where you could, every cell has some degree of, of kind of liberty where you know you could essentially imagine if any cell can be used for any other cell therapeutically, any cell could also be used for reproduction. So we know that in mice, for example, you've or there's already been examples of two mom and two dad children being born. So that you can actually do slight modifications to enable reproduction uh, from two males or two females. It's already been done, being talked about for human trials. And in human trials, it's already been done that there are three parent children where you get a mother and a father, and you also then get a mitochondrial donor to avoid uh, specific mitochondrial diseases. So. What was that? The video that you posted. Yeah, that was weird. That threw me off. Yeah, I was talking about same-sex birth. But there you go. That's the Royal Institute. All righty then. All righty then. Is that is that a naturally observed phenomenon? Wait, no, what? this is that, Frankenstein's that was the of... lab. What? We're talking about the same title, right? What does yes. that have to do with exploring space? No, that was the LGBT. 34 minute mark. L- do you want me to spin on a bit more? LGBT planetary is liberty, where actually the cells that you have can be created such that you can survive on one planet or another as much as possible. So it's kind of the ultimate in terms of liberty. The liberty is to have the most choice possible. And if we design ourselves correctly, you would not be, you know, essentially. Uh, maroon so you could only live on Mars. You make it such that you could adapt and change it so you could live on Earth or Mars or an asteroid with very low gravity. So the Royal Institution is a transhuman organization. Okay. 
You know, these people, want, these people want to live on asteroids with no gravity. Yep. <laughs> like, yo, it, re- are you <laughs> it reminds hell, me of the 2019, 2018 film, The Titan. Y'all got to go see. Y'all got to check that out. It's, it should be um, circulating virally. It's about a guy that was a, he was, I don't know if he was an astronaut or he was an Air Force person. And they did some biogenetic things on him and turned him into a transhuman creature that like, uh, could survive. I forgot the name. Yeah, it's called the Titan. Yeah, you got to check it out. That's basically the same guy that's in the Avatar. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yes, yes, exactly. You're right. Yes, that was him. Yep. Messed up movie. Hey, Chocolate. And he ended up living so, on some planet. <laughs> we got the Ew. we got the labeling archaic um, physics that we talk about and get the scientific method right. And they're talking about uh, if we mess around with our DNA, we can be adapted to live on an asteroid. Yep, that's the future. Yeah, that that checks out. Meanwhile, we got oceans. They they'll tell you we haven't explored even five percent of. But yeah, yeah, let's go live on asteroids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the hell, man? No doubt. Give me some gills. I want to be able to live in the ocean. I mean, really, I would like that. Be able to go a mile deep and you know just voyage to sea. Just go, uh, just subscribe to Dilly Gill Channel. It's easier. Uh, how about we try to make it down maybe maybe ten miles. Uh, here on the the quote unquote planet that we live on, guys. Uh, how's that for an achievement? Instead of trying to go live on a freaking rock, flying around in a vacuum. Nah. <laughs> they can't get past the hydrogen mud. Will there be a whole boot <laughs> on the rock? <laughs> <laughs> it's only so the, 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 the types of things these right? people. <laughs> The types of things these people like will will strive for, right? They all seriously, yeah, you know, in the future we can figure out how to how to live on an asteroid. <laughs> Hang on, I could just see uh, uh, the the travel agent of the future saying, uh, "Haley's comment will be coming in about two months and three days. Uh, if you buy your ticket, we'll be able to transport you there for the next." So many angles years. you can see here. <laughs> this is because yeah, this yeah, is where we, we got, pointed we most of our to come we, back We've only really been looking for a few right. years at high dimensionality and high density, and we haven't even really explored all these other places. But we already have all these blue planets that are not that far away that we could, they could potentially reach and potentially survive in. So really extraordinary <laughs> sort of opportunities within a pretty near area of our uh, sort of galaxy. And, and so to do that, though, the final phase, uh, or, or ninth phase, really, of, of the plan, uh, the penultimate phase, is that we'd think about, okay, currently I'm, I'm pres- presuming no new methods in propulsion that would get uh-huh. us there faster. So if that's the case, you know, maybe I'll be proven wrong. I would love it if I was. But- well, maybe before planet. he can go there, he should show an R value for the planet he thinks we're on now first. Well, we're in the ninth even, phase even of the we're... plan, supposedly. Well, sorry, talking about <laughs> you no, go ahead, man, go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm just saying, we're in, according to him, we're in the ninth phase of the plan. I, I I wasn't aware there was a plan in the first place, but we're on the ninth phase of it. He's living a science fiction dream, man. I mean, come wait, on. Wait, what'd you Brian? say, Brian? We're in the ninth, mean, Brian? We're in the ninth what? That's what he said. We're in the ninth phase of the plan. He said, well, this is actually the wow. ninth phase of the plan. That's what he said. What? But... What are you talking about, lad? Dude, but I'm saying... Get with like, the yo, plan, Eli, Brian. Chocolate. Get with the plan. Yo, yo Eli, chocolate. But, and the but, thing that's really hilarious, this dude is what we say, this dude is dead ass. I mean, he's saying it with a straight face, and he you know he's being recorded saying this. They say this with a straight poker face. They, they are dead ass serious when they say these things. And they don't even know the basic thing that I've learned, or being, I guess, my memory came back thanks to you guys, about the second law of thermodynamics. None of that occurs. If you were that intelligent, lad, you wouldn't even be saying this. But you know your audience is not as intelligent as you. So you can get over and say that and have them smiling like the goofy guy in customs on The Golden Child that Eddie Murphy was like, you don't even know what I'm saying. 
and just smiling and grinning. They don't even know what this man is saying is just totally Brother asinine and asinine. Huh? I'm surprised that I'm surprised Brian, who lives in Ireland, hasn't gone to the pub in all these years to know we're in the ninth stage of the plan. <laughs> well, look, it, it, what we have is people who are um, they're giving away whatever intellectual abilities they have to live in a fantasy, and that's what they're doing. Because this, is, like, I mean, this is not to do with intellect. This has got to do with fantasy. And if I'm going to go into fantasy, I. I think heliocentrism is a pretty uh, like basic heliocentrism. I'm not talking about aliens or predator or something like that. I'm talking about just basic heliocentrism. It's the most boring fantasy I've ever encountered. So if I'm going to go into fantasy, I'm much more likely to go into something a lot better than what they're giving us. Because that's all they are. They're just fantasists. There's no intelligence being used. There's no progress going to be made in any direction with this. It's just going to be a complete brick wall they're going to hit all the time. But they, they're going to keep telling themselves that that wall doesn't exist. You know, I'm telling you that it doesn't exist. Brian, right. they're in the ninth stage of their plan. How dare you? <laughs> How many stages did they have? Though? Just That's stick the with the plan, man. Stop being a stick in the mud. Stick with the plan. <laughs> going, going, back to what, going back to what we were talking about before with certain videographers, you know, staying in their lane, as D. Rose put it. Um, I, I don't mind sometimes them taking a little detour off the lane into the shoulder and then coming back. Because for me, like the, the first video that I can really remember watching that had to do with this topic came from a, a, a channel that was focused on UFOs. Now, there was a UFO channel. Yes, I said it. UFO channel. I used to enjoy watching because sometimes there'd be crazy shit on it. I don't know if they were real or not, but I know I've seen shit in the sky that probably shouldn't have been seeing, but that's a different story for a different episode. Ooh, ooh. But Chuka, did you ever see but, the crop circle video it, where it appeared from that light? Did you ever see that one? Yeah, I've seen it. Live? Yeah. 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 Okie so, dokie then. My, so right. my, my point was was that during this video, now this this guy, I think his name was the video, the, the channel name was like Secure Team 10 or something like that. And one day he decided to have a video about this weird topic that he's come across called Flat Earth. <laughs> right? And being that I watched this channel all the time, I was just like, okay, this is very interesting. And I had to see, this was the time around 2015 when all the Flat Earth videos would start popping up on the recommend or the recommended lists, right? And I never really clicked any of them. I was just like, eh, I don't know. It, it's I'm not staying away from it, but let, let me leave that for a little, another time. And after watching this video, because obviously this guy's a, he's got a UFO channel, so his focus is very heliocentric. But then when he addressed flat Earth and he addressed some of the, I don't remember what the points he was bringing were. But he addressed what some of the flat earthers were saying and his rebuttals or his responses to those things just to me didn't make any sense i was just like okay i'm not uh, obviously at the time i wasn't a quote-unquote flat earther but it didn't make any sense the things the guy was saying and literally i think that's the day i started actually looking into the topic i don't i think that was the last video from that channel that I watched. I, I well, literally you know, stopped. Were they, silly, were they silly answers? Like, when I first checked, they told me to climb up a tree. Uh, and you'll prove that. I don't, know if it was, I don't know if it was that basic, but it was on that level. Like, the guy, he's a nice guy, but he's which, normal, uh, right? <laughs> which, which branch of science told you that, Neil? <laughs> <laughs> With that, I'm going to say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley premiering streams. Hopefully, smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, joining as a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member, and all that good stuff. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video.
Yikes!